Gary Payton II was ruled out tonight after this flagrant foul resulted in a serious left elbow injury that I think might be pretty bad. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and in this video we're gonna talk about this injury to Gary Payton II, which I'll be honest, I'm pretty concerned about. If you wanna to try to read lips here, this is Bob Myers delivering some news to Joe Lacob, and you can see it doesn't look like it's good news. Of course, I don't know for sure if this is exactly about Gary Payton, but timing seemed pretty relevant. At the time of recording this, the official report is the x-rays were inconclusive and he's scheduled to undergo an MRI. Important to understand, this is different than saying the x-rays were negative. So basically this means there still is some concern there could be a fracture, the x-ray couldn't completely rule it out, and so they need to do additional, more detailed testing. And really a fracture should be at the top of your differential based on this specific mechanism. First of all, the mechanism with this type of fall is something referred to as a foosh, or a fall on an outstretched hand. Basically, whenever Peyton lands here, he's landing on that outstretched left arm. Whenever he does that, all of that load is going to be transmitted from the wrist up through the forearm and into the elbow. And so this is a common position where we see fractures of the bones in the forearm. Of course, the bones on the forearm continue up to be part of the elbow joint, and so a foosh in an adult we worry about a fracture specifically at a spot called the radial head, which is an area in the elbow. A lot of people were saying this looks like a hyperextension, but if you look closely here, his elbow doesn't really hyperextend. It pretty much reaches full extension or 180 degrees, but it doesn't really look like there's any true hyperextension. When we get to this point right here, his elbow is back in flexion. And so really it's this landing on that outstretched arm with an extended or a locked elbow transmits all that force through the elbow, leading to a high risk for elbow fractures. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, I've highlighted the bones of the forearm and then of course the elbow. So there's two bones in the forearm, the radius and the ulna. The radius is the bone that sits on the thumb side of the forearm, and then the ulna is the one that stands on the pinky side. The ulna is the bone that comes up to form this bump on the back of your elbow called the olecranon process. The radial head is the portion of the radius that's up at the elbow joint. So this area, right here. The radial head is the part of the bone that allows our wrist to pronate and supinate, to basically turn up and down. You can actually feel your radial head spin if you push on the outside of your elbow and then turn your wrist up and down. That bone that you feel spinning beneath your finger is your radial head basically turning back and forth in that joint. So with a foosh or a fallen and outstretched hand, all of that load gets transmitted up through the radius into the elbow, and basically you get this just sudden jolt of axial force through that radial capitellar joint, which can lead to a radial head fracture. These fractures can actually be pretty darn subtle on x-ray. So here, this is an example of one. Of course, this is not Gary Payton's. And you can see right here, this is going to be the radial head. This is going to be the ulna, and then this is going to be the humerus or the arm bone. So the fracture, of course, is sitting right there. Now, most radial head fractures are going to be intra-articular because they involve the articular or the joint surface. X-rays are the first step to evaluate for them, and honestly, sometimes it can be hard to actually see the true fracture in the bone. So on X-rays, we're taught to look for secondary signs that suggests somebody could have an underlying fracture that we just don't see yet on the x-ray. In the case of elbow fractures, that's something called a fat pad. Now there's an anterior meaning front and a posterior meaning back fat pad. And basically they're kind of outlined right here. So what we look for on an x-ray is something called a fat pad sign or a sail sign. Essentially in the front of the elbow, you can imagine this space almost looks like the sail of a boat. Sometimes it can be normal to have this anterior sail sign on an x-ray, but anytime we see a posterior sail sign or this posterior fat pad elevated off of the humerus, that suggests that there's a fusion or basically fluid inside the joint and that fluid is presumably coming from a fracture. So even if we don't see the fracture in the bone, if we see this posterior fat pad sign, we presume there's a fracture underneath. This is where that inconclusive piece can sort of come into play because we might not really appreciate on x-ray a true crack or a true fracture line, but there might be some of these other signs to suggest there could still be a fracture. An MRI is gonna show us really good detail if there is in fact some bruising or some edema or basically bleeding at the site of a possible fracture, but it's also going to show us the soft tissues. It's gonna show us the ligaments, it's gonna show us the tendons, it's gonna show us the cartilage. And so it's gonna give a better sense of just the overall state of the elbow. Because oftentimes when there is a fracture of the radial head, we can have associated injury to those soft tissues that might influence the treatment. And the MRI tomorrow is gonna to help look at those other things on the differential. Maybe there was a degree of hyperextension we just couldn't appreciate on the camera angles, or just some other generalized contusion or soft tissue injury that would certainly be a better scenario, assuming there's no big ligament injury, 
compared to something like a fracture. Fracture treatment is of course going to be influenced by how large the fracture fragment is and if there's any other associated soft tissue injuries, but can be as simple as just putting someone in a sling for a few days and then doing some early range of motion. Now the trouble with a fracture is it takes time for that bone to heal before you can actually start putting weight and load through the elbow. So even though you're only in a sling for a few days, you're not getting back to your sport that quickly at all. The chance of Peyton missing more time really depends on what that MRI shows. And so we'll just have to wait and see the final word. But of course, that fracture is going to be at the top of our differential and something that we have to make sure we rule out. So in summary, after Peyton gets hit here, he goes down to land and instinctually just throws out his left arm to try to catch his fall. What this leads to is something called a foosh, or a fall on an outstretched hand, where he gets this sudden axial load delivered from the floor up through his forearm into his elbow joint. When somebody has elbow pain after a fall like this, the number one thing on our differential is going to be a radial head fracture. X-rays can either show the fracture directly, or we can see indirect signs such as a posterior fat pad sign. Non-operative treatment involves a short period of time in a sling with early range of motion before functional return to sport. So we'll await the final word on Peyton's injury, but hopefully this was still educational to talk through what would be at the top of the differential, some of the anatomy here, and how you would do that basic evaluation and treatment for something like a radial head fracture. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.